So what's your budget? Does this fit within your budget? What kind of budget are we thinking of? These kinds of questions can catch a person off guard if they aren't prepared for it. Even worse, for a lot of clients, it can sound like you're invading their privacy if you don't build any context around these budget-related questions. This can cause pushback where the client resists revealing their budget, putting you two in a standoff of who's gonna make the first move. Today I'll be covering seven big tips for how you can ask your client about their budget without feeling uncomfortable. But first, if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Brant and this is Indy, a productivity platform to help you manage your freelance business from start to finish. We want to give you all the tips we wish we knew along the way to help you take your freelancing to the next level. So if that sounds like the stuff you want to know more about, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these tips. Now, it's not just freelancers who have a tough time talking about money. Clients and small business owners also find budgeting to be a tricky topic to digest. So don't worry. Finances just have a strange effect on everyone. The money talk? Ooh has grown into something more than just talking about money. Psychologically, we feel that the answer to this discussion will reveal our values and our values motivate our behavior, which is why it feels like such a personal question. But here's why it's important to ask your client about their budget. It opens the door to the client either raising their budget or renegotiating the scope of the project. Knowing the client's budget also helps you position yourself when creating the proposal, and having a great proposal is key to making a deal with clients. Besides, there's no point in wasting time creating a brilliant proposal and then finding out that the client has no money to put on the table. So let's dive in. Here are seven tips for asking a client what their budget is. Number one, ease into the money conversation. Number two, ask open-ended sales questions. Number three, help educate the client. Number four, focus on the value you offer. Number five, speak to the right person. Number six, ask about past projects. And number seven, send a rough estimate. Let's break down tip number one, ease into the money conversation. Now you don't have to be afraid about asking about the budget. Your client is just as curious about the budget for the project as much as you are. So by asking, you're actually opening up the door to a conversation that both of you are curious about. That being said, you should avoid immediately diving into the money conversation at the start of your proposal. Instead, you should begin your proposals expressing genuine interest in the project so your client knows that you're excited to work with them. It also shows your client that the money conversation isn't just a matter of you being greedy. Also, let your client know that you're familiar with all the components of the project scope. Understanding the project scope is gonna help you customize the proposal to your team's satisfaction and will allow you to cover all of their pain points. Tip number two, ask open-ended sales questions. Now, it's way easier to think about this topic through our own experience than it is to think about the client's point of view. But for a moment, let's put ourselves in their shoes. Just as we're wondering that we're gonna be judged for setting our prices too high, the client is wondering if they're gonna be judged for their budget. So one of the best ways to pop the budget question is to start off with a few open-ended sales questions. Here are some questions you can ask in a discovery call. Could you tell me more about your business? What motivated you to take this call with me? How long have you been in business? What are your business goals over the next six months? What are some of your expectations from my services? The number of questions you can ask are endless, but each question should help your client understand where your money figures are coming from. And as you begin to ask more open-ended sales questions, you're gonna help your client feel a lot more comfortable talking about their budget range with you. You can even guide your client into this discussion with questions like, so what kind of project budget could we expect to work with? And explain why you need to know this information. You can say something like, this will let me know what I can do to meet your needs and what kind of timeline I have to work with. Which gives your client a reason for why you're asking besides just wanting to know how much money you're gonna make. Tip number three, help educate the client. Clients might not realize that the number in their head is an unrealistic expectation. That's why part of our job is to explain to the client how many resources it's gonna take to develop the product, the plan, or the project that they have in mind. If a client hesitates paying you what your skills are worth, you can address these budget concerns by referring back to successful projects that you were involved with. When you share past results, you can instill trust, and you can also help your client reevaluate their expectations and their offer. As a freelancer, it can be very easy to find yourself in a position that just leaves you feeling undervalued, especially if you're held back by the fear of not getting the job. But as soon as you begin to see how vital you are in the process, you can start to understand how much value you're bringing to the client. 
Freelancing may be the new trend, but that doesn't mean you have to compete with others to work for the lowest price point. With many clients now hiring freelancers to do the job, you have to differentiate between quality and price. So do your research and Google your industry's rates. And if you know what your industry's rates are up to, you can back up your quotes with market research. Also, leave a, a little bit of wiggle room in case your client wants to negotiate. Tip number five, speak to the right person. Now, depending on the size of your client's business, you might be working with a single individual or an entire corporate hierarchy. So take some time to understand the role of the person who you're speaking to in the discovery call. Does this person have any influence on the budget decisions? If not, they may be one of multiple people who you need to speak to to move the project forward. So before jumping into the negotiations, try to find out who the key financial holder on the project is. And if you're not sure how to find the right person, just ask the person you're in current contact with. Tip number six, ask about past projects. Another way you can settle on the budget is by gauging your clients on their past projects. You'd be surprised how helpful this is. Asking specifics about their process, the teams involved, and past expectations will help you come up with a fair quote. You might even know some of the previous freelancers or small businesses they were involved with, which can help you provide some insights into their rate, their budget estimates, and what you can charge. Money talk aside, asking a client about their past projects shows your client that you care about their needs and it builds trust with them. Tip number seven, send a rough estimate. Now that you've walked your client through the sales process and you have a rough idea of what the budget will be, it's time to come up with an estimate for the project. By this point, you're either interested in moving the project forward or you're realizing that your visions just aren't aligning. But first, here's why you shouldn't give your prices over the phone. It's gonna be natural for your client to wanna ask you what your prices are gonna be. And it makes sense for them too. You've just been quizzing them about what their budget is gonna be. So naturally, they're gonna to wanna to know what your prices are. While it's not a bad thing to give your prices out over the phone, you're gonna have a much clearer idea of what your price quote should be once you take a little bit of time to sit down and really soak in the full scope of the project. So just let your client know that you need some time to explore the project scope further and that you'll get back to them by the end of the day. By doing that, you're gonna take a fair approach to what these services are actually worth and take the pressure right off of feeling like you have to undervalue yourself and fear that the client is gonna push back. So how should you deliver your price quotes? So after the initial budget meeting, you can follow up with an email that talks about your rates. Sending a rough estimate will open the door for budget discussions and give you a ballpark of which ideas to pitch for the project. You can also try sending a mini proposal, which is a great way to help you win if you're in a project bid with other freelancers. Mini proposals show that you've spent time thinking about the best options and solutions without devoting too much of your resources to a potential client. More importantly, it's gonna make you stand out from competitors by being informative and looking professional. You can use an online template to help you nail the proposal quickly, like the free proposal templates we have at Indie. With the help of proper templates, you can produce a mini proposal to prove the client that you and your rates are the right fit for the job. Just click the link in the description box below and you can be done creating your proposal in minutes. Asking your client the big budget question doesn't have to be complicated. Whether your client is transparent or not, Using these tips can help you determine if you should keep exploring this pitch or not. So the sooner you dive into the budget talk, the sooner you can decide if they're the right client for you. For even more tips about this topic, you can check out our blog on this subject in the description box below. You can also find a link in the description box for Indy's proposal tool, which will help you put these tips into action. And if you're just starting out in your freelancing journey or you're looking for more tips, hit that subscribe button and follow our socials. Indy is a company of freelancers just like you, and we wanna give you the tips that we learned along the way to help you grow your business. So let us know in the comments below what you wanna know about. And I'll see you next time. And having a great proposal is key to something. Making a deal with clients. <laughs> Don't. <clears throat> Let me get a water. I need some water down my throat pipe.